Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Current Affairs Taiwan. I'm Michael Turton, and this is Donovan Smith. It's great to have you back. It's great to be back. We're supposed to say that, right? Right. Okay. Because you're on the East Coast, and of course you're thinking, it's not great to be back. <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, if I was on the, be East on the East Coast. Coast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so, I, I now I know the real reason, you know, for our audience, that you were there on the East Coast is so that you could rest and recuperate so that we could have a great fall season. What do you, I'm sure that's why you were there. That's it. That's the reason. But, yep. listen, oh, we should tell you that uh, right now we're running this as, as a video setup, but we're waiting on microphones to come yep. to us from the United States. Then, in a couple of weeks, we'll have this all set up and we'll do parallel podcast and video at the same time. So we will be upgrading our technology, creeping towards professionalism. Yes. Or in our case, slouching toward it. <laughs> <laughs> like, like yes. No, no, no. We are creeps slouching toward. There I think go. that's where we're going with this. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least the lighting's looking a little better. Uh, the actual lighting that we've ordered should arrive tomorrow. This is, but we're 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 we're, we're moving it along. Every every show gets a little bit worse. I mean, better. Um, so, all right, should we get going? Let's get going. So what have we got right. on the plate for today? All right, we've got Want Want Sues. Want Want Sues everyone. I know. Is there someone they haven't sued? <laughs> Let's see, who's Want Want Suing? <laughs> so the Financial Times reported that uh, Want Want was getting orders yep. from Beijing on how to report on China-related issues. Mm -hmm. And um, Want Want has decided to sue the Financial Times and the journalist in question, Catherine Hilla. And uh, Want One is also suing everyone who promulgates that report. Uh, I assume this this will lead to like meta-suing because they'll have to sue everyone who reports on them suing about this report and so on and so on and so on, right? You're deep. I'm deep. <laughs> Wait, I'm the plucky comic relief. Okay? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so who else are they suing? Um, okay, all right, so China Times President Wang Feng made the announcement at a news conference in Taipei, which was also attended by several Chinese Nationalist Party lawmakers. <laughs> Wang said the, that CNA President Zhang, Zhang Rei Chang, not Zhang Rei Chen, Zhang Rei Chang, uh, had taken the lead in spreading misinformation. Now, this is the head of the CNA he's accusing of doing this and spreading misinformation by running one-sided reports and analyses, adding that Chang had left an indelible stain on the National News Agency by propagating fake news. He's also going after um, uh, well, Financial Times. He's also going after um, a DPP, uh, Luo Wenjia, I believe. The Secretary General of the DPP. Yeah. Um, he said in a radio interview that uh, Want Want was funded by China. Well, when China funded yeah. by the Communist Party. Yeah. <laughs> so now, if we go to oh well, wait, they're also suing the they're also suing everyone who reported that that China Times is paying five hundred NT to have the show shown in their restaurants. If you travel around Taiwan, yeah, which I frequently do, you will find that every restaurant is either TVBS or China or CTI. And recently, a couple of weeks ago, it was reported that those companies, it was claimed that those two companies were paying restaurants 500 NT a month mm -hmm. to keep the channel on those, on TVBS and on CTI. So you can see that this constant propagandizing about, oh, I'm sorry, <coughs> constant <coughs> reporting yeah. about Han Guoyu, uh, which is seen by everyone who eats in restaurants all over Taiwan. Is going to have an effect. But don't you realize that if you're showing, you know, if you're showing Taobao on the TV, that increases your appetite to be more full. Because of course, <laughs> Taobao is, of course, an empty straw man. So you need, you know, it makes you feel hungry. That's the real reason. Oh, don't don't spread lies. Taobao. Oh. <laughs> we'll have that in a minute. Hang on. All right. So here's. Uh, if you want oh to... yeah, this is the. You, yes. You might remember that uh, back in 2008, Wan Wan acquired the China Times. And then, um, that during that period when they were acquiring them, they also threatened to sue a whole bunch of media who were <laughs> reporting on this. This was back in 2009, after they acquired it in November of 2008. Uh, and then, Tai Ong Wong, who runs the Wan Wan Group, had met with 
uh, the Taiwan Affairs Office in China. And he had told them that the reason he was acquiring the group was to advance China-Taiwan relations. Mm -hmm. That's an actual quote. Here it is right here. It says, in order to use the power of the press to advance relations between China and Taiwan. Where was this reported? In Wat Wan's own internal newsletter, according to an AP report from Peter Enav, who was one of the best reporters based here in Taiwan in that period. So, there's no question... Oh, that's my blog, my old blog. <laughs> there's no question of what Wan Wan's goals are with this group. And once again, we must note that poor Terry Guo, Guo Taiming, is probably regretting not ever purchasing a newspaper of his own. Well, you know, I, I, I kind of feel like he was looking at it and going, you know, it, that's a little too obvious, but you never know. No. <laughs> so, yeah. So, but, you know, I mean, after all, we know that uh, moving on to the next issue, <laughs> it's actually titled Hanguoyu Porn. <laughs> that was just a note, folks. The, uh, what we we're specifically referring to with this is it's kind of a joke because uh, Hanguoyu, of course, you know, they've had the big flooding down in Kaohsiung. Um, and the, um, and, but his, his line group, and it wasn't his fault. Uh, it was the information bureau, someone in there, I think screwed up. But they, uh, somebody <laughs> accidentally linked to a bunch of porn on Hanguoyu. He sent it around his line group. On his line group. So, anyway. Uh, <clears throat> oh, but by the way, by I the think way. this actually is, is, works as a perfect segue because, of course, the Want Want group, you know, now that they're all but hurt from the from the FT article, you know, want want want. Um, you know, they <laughs> I didn't write that joke. <laughs> um, uh, but you know, I mean, they're they're, they're just sh you know, CTI is showing seventy percent of the coverage at, at at certain times is of just Hanguoyu. So speaking of uh, yeah, that's right. The the NCC, the National yeah. It's, it's between fifty something, and it's it's peaked out at seventy. Yeah, it's really bad. Um, at the, certain times, yeah. The the Which, bias is obvious. Yeah. But I was going to mention. Remember, we talked about the Han Goyers line groups like three weeks ago, right? Yeah. When you said they had spiked up to like mm -hmm. three hundred thousand. How big is it now? I don't know, but it was uh, like eighty thousand in the report. Eight hundred or something it should be eight hundred. Eight hundred thousand. Yeah, is yeah, that yeah. many? Yeah, because it because when I when I actually spotted that. Um, it jumped from like two hundred to three hundred thousand, something along those lines. I mean, it was it was in a, one day. In one day, um, <clears throat> and so I assumed that it'd be like eight hundred thousand. So a lot of Russian bots are that. looking at porn right now, <laughs> <laughs> trying to figure out what that, that is. <laughs> well, you know, they just sort of they see the round thing. And, you know. This is why AI will never transcend and become self-aware <laughs> because, <laughs> because of incidents like this. <laughs> Hangboyer saving the world from Skynet. Well, uh, you know, all they all they need to do is that you know they identify Hangboyer's <laughs> bald head, and you know they find it in the porn. Right? Uh, there you I'm go. sure they can identify. Um, um, so it rained in Kaohsiung, and and Hangboyer's out partying. Um, that was sort of the big comparison news. Uh, Hangboyer is attending a a uh, banquet dinner. Which had been organized long in advance, and it would have been very rude of him not to show up. But he also turned down visits with the red and black factions up in Taichung to stick around for the to deal with the flooding. Meanwhile, while he well, there's all these pictures circulating of him going gambe and drinking, obviously drinking alcohol, eating at a nice banquet, having a good time. What is Chen Chi Mai doing? Chen Chi Mai, you recall, was the DPP candidate who lost to Hang Yu in the mayor election. What was Chen Chi Mai doing? Uh, he was uh, he was out in uh, he was he was in his role as vice premier. He was out in ex inspecting the floods in Kaohsiung uh, with his you know rain gear on, out looking miserable in the rain. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I have a sneaking suspicion that that. Uh, Chen probably was just doing his job, but I have a sneaking suspicion he may have been hamming it up a little bit <laughs> to show off the, uh, you know, you could have had me as mayor. <laughs> you know. 
So, all right. Anything else with Hangul you think we want to talk about this week? Not this week, Hangul. Not this week? No. Okay. <clears throat> well, the polls came out. Early. Oh, yeah, all yeah. All those polls. Those, the polls, I don't know. Well, they were the all huge, over the place. There was a huge set of online polls that all showed that everyone thinks, be mm -hmm. careful with this. Yeah. Everyone thinks that Tsai Ing-wen is going to beat Han Goyer. Yeah. Well, every newspaper had the same, by huge margins, 60 to like 90% in some cases. Yeah. These were all online polls. Who, who do you think will win? Right. Asking that question. Yeah. And I said this to you, and what did you say to me? You pointed out to me what? <laughs> Lin Jialong was here in Taichung. Almost every single poll, straight across the board, even the ones that showed Lu Xiuyan ahead in support, when they asked that question, who do you think will win, it was always Lin Jialong. And a similar one also, probably another analogy could be made, uh, with a, a certain major world power in the last presidential election there. That's right. Um, pretty much everybody thought, um, somebody, what was her name? I think she's locked up now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> that's another country's news. All right. So, um, but yeah, so basically the, the point being, of course, is that, you know, what people, the what polls that, that ask people, who do you think will win, are not necessarily <laughs> very reliable. Yeah. Then there were two other polls that came out. One was a TVBS poll that had Han up over Tsai. Yep. And the other was a Green Party poll. Well, the TVBS polls, of course, blue leaning TVBS. Mm -hmm. And the Green Party, not to be confused with Pan Green, but the Green Party of Taiwan also had a poll that showed Tsai up, but of course they lean green. Yeah. So you pay your money and you take your choice. Yeah. It's too early right now, anyway. So. Next up is the one you're not seeing right now. What happened to Guo Taimi, Terry Guo? <laughs> he went so, to Japan. So it's the three other maybe candidates here. We got Terry Guo, we got Wang Jinping, and Ke Pi. Ke Pi. So, Terry Guo. Oh, yes. <clears throat> All right. We need background music for this. <laughs> Go ahead. <clears throat> All right, from the KMT official website. <laughs> uh, according to the UDN, um, Go stated that so now he's uh, he you know he's gone to the he's gone to Japan he's um, okay so uh, he he's gone abroad to cool down and collect himself and it was now in Japan. Go went on to say that there was an attempt to get a further understanding of Japan's pre uh, this, sorry he said that he was there in an attempt to get a further understanding of Japan's preschool child care policy <laughs> and to meet with chairman of the Taiwan Japan Exchange Association for an exchange of views over the substantive ties between Taiwan and Japan in the future and most importantly over Taiwan's challenges and opportunities as a result of Japan South Korea competition and he mentions that he had some meetings with semiconductor in industry figures he also goes on to state that quote now I only chase after ideals rather than fame or wealth, end quote. According to the KMT site, causing divergent interpretations over whether Go might bolt the KMT to run in the 2020 presidential race independently. So he goes to Japan. He's going to look into their child care policy. That's hmm. what you do when you're a presidential candidate. And you talk about international relations, which... Is what you do when you're a presidential candidate. But then he goes on to meet with major figures in the semiconductor industry, and considering he's the chairman of Han, he was the chairman of Hanhai. <laughs> What's he gonna do? So what is he doing? So he never signed the form saying he wouldn't go. Nope, board. and he still hasn't ruled it out. All he said is he hasn't considered leaving the KMT and running as an independent. Interesting. Um, he hasn't said that he's he's uh, ruling it out. So he says, so he's got until September 18th, which as I understand is the last day you can register as a candidate. Yeah. So it's going to be an interesting August. Yeah. So now by that point, now he's got the money to do it. He would need to get the, um, uh, he'd need to get enough signatures. The media reported, lots of media reported that he was actually shocked by how badly he lost to Han Goyer. Yeah, and that that's the one thing. I mean, I was shocked. I'll be honest. I, I was I I was expecting, and I said this last week. Um, 
<clears throat> with Rachel and that Nathan Bado nailed it on frozen garlic. He yeah, was yeah, talking yeah. about that that uh, he thought that Han supporters would give a fifty percent boost. And, yeah, they did. Uh, I was expecting Han to win, and by I think everyone and was. fairly handily. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I didn't write that one either. No. <laughs> the funny thing is, you're the guy with all the puns. I'm supposed to be the plucky comic uh, relief here, okay? That's my job. <laughs> um, but um, the um, <laughs> but uh, the margin, I was stunned by the margin. Um, 17%. Yeah, I mean, obviously, hand supporters, the hand fan army is, they were staying home. They yeah. were, they were, by their phones. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're a passionate bunch of people. Yeah. My ex-wife, my ex-wife put it well. She said they tossed go out like a piece of garbage. Mm -hmm. He must really feel heartbroken. Actually, uh, the thing is, is that he's he's actually a pretty strong candidate still. If he were to run, he if I <coughs> came to, you, I would have picked him or Eric Zhu. Yeah. But oh well. Now here's another thing about the primary. Uh, just a, as a side note here, <clears throat> I don't know if you noticed, but um, uh, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joe Shiwe, uh, oh, he yeah. got 8.2%, <laughs> and um, uh, Mr. S Let's Surrender Now, uh, <laughs> Zhang Yajong, he got uh, two point something, so between the two of them, they got 10%, Yeah, which is... Uh, but I thought it was actually pretty high as well. Joe Shiwe was actually interviewed this week. Yes. And if you listen to the interview, he sounds even way more blue than I ever thought he was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, he's, he actually meant what he said that when he's talking about, uh, anyway, let's go on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've met him. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, I saw a horse try and throw him. <laughs> Seriously. Anyway. Um, okay, so we've got Wang Jinping and Ke Pi are the other two possibilities here. Oh, what happened with Wang? So we've got, okay, so everything about Wong is yes, no, maybe, but without actually saying anything. So <clears throat> he's not leaving the, the KMT. Unless he does. Unless he does. Okay. He quit the KMT primary. But he's running for president. But he's running for president. <laughs> but he's not leaving the party. He's still uh, a, a setting up, and like just set one up in Tainan, uh, a local support, you know, friends of Wang Jinping, Tainan wow. branch, which is basically these are your local campaign uh, people. These are the guys who go out there and canvas for you, raise money. So he he's still going ahead. Some there's a guy out there, um, not Wang Jinping directly, of course, uh, who has gone out. A friend of Wang Jinping is collecting signatures for him. Wow. Now Wang Jinping's comment was, of course, oh well. You know that's nice of him. I guess we'll just keep them if, and just in, you know I don't know if we'll use them or not. Maybe I don't know. Literally, I mean yeah. it's just. Um, so everybody's like, well, how is this going to work? You know, I mean, if you're not leaving the party, you're not. What, what are you doing here? So here's uh, here's the latest. Uh, this is from Now News. Uh, and the headline is, will you uh, replace uh, Han Guoyu or leave the party? Wang Jinping, uh, I have asked the Bodhisattva to prepare a road for me. Ametofo, ametofo. So, yeah, so basically he's looking for uh, the heavens to prepare it for him. Puza. That's right. So, um, so <laughs> does is Pusa greater than Matsu? Well, Matsu failed. <laughs> well, I know. Well, see, that's why, one of the reasons I think that, that Terry Go might actually still be in the race. Because that man's got a huge ego. There's a lot of time before the election. Yeah. And he's already gone out there and publicly thanked Matsu and Guanin, by the way, for uh, encouraging him to get into the race. Wow. Yeah. Remember when during the... Uh, during the polling, during that week, he, he started claiming by Wednesday that the poll was rigged, that yes. it was fake. Yes. Which was clear indication that he was going to lose. But the interesting thing for me was that his reaction was so unstatesmanlike. Yeah. It, it shows that when you scratch him a little down there, he's still the intemperate, 
you know. He's still thin skin. Yes, he's he's yeah. gonna have a difficult time being a candidate. Yeah. Oh, and who's that handsome man? All right. <laughs> so Coenzo, will he run? <laughs> we were talking about this before. I, yeah, I, I'm. My comment was, I it's like I keep going back and forth on whether I think Clippy's gonna run, but basically it's like two out of three days I think he's gonna run, and one out of three days I think he's not. But this last week he came out and he was attacking. Um, now this is a Taipei Times article. Ke says election a Cao Bao Cai Bao choice. And he's been on the attack against both uh, the KMT, the DPP, and Han Guoyu, and Tsai Ing-wen personally. He's been attacking them pretty yeah. harshly. Yeah. Which smells to me because he's said before he wanted to see if the parties would come up with a good candidate so he wouldn't have to run. And they didn't. And he's been trying to convince himself either to run or not to run based on who the parties chose. So, Cao Bao, by the way, is often translated as country bumpkin or empty straw man, or and that's what he's been, that's a nick, common nickname for Han Guoyu by uh, Han Guoyu opponents. Um, and he's also, now he's uh, switched that just slightly to Cai Bao, which is a play on Cai Ing Wen, the Cai in her name. Um, <clears throat> to veggie bun, um, so he's calling them Cao Bao and Cai Bao, <coughs> which I think is, it is kind of funny. He's cute. He is cute. Um, so, yeah, so what do you think? I'm going to come down, right now I'm thinking he's not going to run. Why? He does, I, I'm just thinking that he must know he can't win. So why would he run? There's no poll that has ever showed him leading. Yes, actually, there have been. Really? Uh, yeah, there have been uh, un under certain like uh, you know ar arrangements. Oh, yeah, but, yeah, right. If there's some weird conditions, but fundamentally. Yeah. But here's the thing, though. Fundamentally, he does well in all of the uh, you know in all of them. He's he's above twenty five percent. He's yeah. He he's he's somewhere in the twenty to thirty percent range. But he doesn't hit forty, and you've got to hit forty to win. Yeah, and he never he never hits forty, but <clears throat> he he definitely does not like time. He's made this absolutely clear. Um, uh, let's see, did he say it in this article? Um, in, in the last serious three-way election, which was the 2000 election, yeah. Sun Tzu Yuvian got 39%. Yep. And Song Chu you got, what was it? 30, 37, 38. 36, or something like that. Yeah, and, it was close. And then Jen got 20-something. Yeah, upper twenties. He, he still he, they were they were neck and neck until like right near the end, and then Song and uh, and then Chen. Uh, yeah, yeah. Then the and Jan was never in it. <laughs> well, no, he was actually earlier on. He was doing well because well, a lot of people thought he was. He was like you know he was uh, <clears throat> Lee Dong Hui version two, and then by the end of the campaign, people were like, <laughs> there was that white gloves incident. <laughs> <Anyway>. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, I think Ke is still thinking about it. I don't think he's made up his mind. I can't believe he's going to run. The math doesn't favor him. That's the math true. doesn't favor him. He's got no organization. He doesn't have a lot of money. He has got... Uh, how well is he going to do down south? Now, if I were Terry Go, I would try... I would be courting Wang Jinping, which I told you about before. Yeah, right. And Kepi. And what I, if I were Terry Go, here's what I'd be trying to, and I talked about the reverse merger with Wang Jinping. Right. To essentially take over the KMT. Wang Jinping gets the party chair position. What has he got to offer Kepi? Well, everyone's going VP, VP, P. I don't know. Kepi doesn't want to be the, the no, VP. No, no I mean, and, you know. Kepi, you know, VP Kepi. No, that just it just sounds bad, um, <laughs> which is a very good reason, right? Um, I think that though that Kepi might be open to the idea of being the premier, the head of the executive unit, possibly, and that would I think that would make a lot of sense because that's the kind of thing that Kepi likes to do. It's the nuts and bolts getting the job done. 
which is exactly what the premiere does. They get in, into the into the weeds and hack through all the well if they if they're good, uh, and, you know, and get and get stuff done. And that's that's I think would actually really appeal to them. That's interesting. Um, I think he'd prefer to be the president, but if he's looking at the poll numbers and he's going, I can't seem to break 20-something. Go's got all the money in the world. I don't have to step down from my job as Taipei mayor. That's right. Because I'm not running for president. I wouldn't be running, yeah. So, but all I'd have to do is help campaign for Go. I could see him going maybe if Go's running as an independent and he's not aware of a deal with Wang Jinping to do a reverse merger. Wang Jinping's Taiwanese. He yeah. actually has higher support among DPP. He, his support's generally low across the board, but he actually has higher support among DPP members than, than KMT members. It wouldn't surprise me. He's I actually saw expected. a poll. Yeah. I saw a poll where it was like, you know, he had like 30% something positives, 30 something, but it was slightly higher amongst DPP supporters than KMT supporters. So, you know, I could see Terry Go making a kind of a sort of blue but businessman, practical blue argument to Kupi and saying, look, I'm going to work with you and I also want to work with um, Wang Jinping, <coughs> who's Taiwanese. <coughs> I'm running an independent run. Wang Jinping stays in the KMT, but basically him and all of his followers are like, well, we're loyal to the KMT, vote go. That's that's possible. It's it's that's if if I were Terry Go, that's what I'd be trying to do. If you wanted to run for president, yeah, yeah. If I was Terry Go and wanted to run for president, that's what I would be trying to do. Meanwhile, in the DPP, yes, we have a new face. <laughs> yes, Lin Fei Fan. Yep. Where'd you hear that name? He was a leader of the Sunflowers back in 2014. Mm -hmm. Then he ran off to England to do his uh, master's degree at uh, LSE, was it? And now he's back at uh, the DPP. And they can't find his thesis. It's, 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 it's <laughs> <laughs> Tsai Ing-wen actually sent her thesis over to the library <laughs> just this week, <laughs> ending that trash. <laughs> so, so what is Lin's motivation to join the DPP? Our goal should be to create a hand-free homeland. <laughs> a hand-free homeland. Um, and basically, I mean, and not, and not, and this is the, this is a, the, you know, Focus Taiwan CNA website article. In a Chinese language one I saw, uh, I, I, there was some good, um, I thought there was some, he made some points that were interesting. He pointed out, and this is absolutely true, because everyone's focused on the fact he didn't join the NPP. Right. Um, but he said, you know, a lot of people who are in the Sunflower Movement joined the DPP and a lot joined the NPP. You know, and that's actually a fairly valid point. Right. Is that, you know, not everybody who was involved in the Sunflower Movement joined the NPP. A bunch of them joined the DPP. So, uh, and that he clearly, I mean, read between the lines, what do you think he's saying? He's saying very clearly, hands got to be stopped. Yeah. Well, he's saying so, that. Clearly, yeah. And there's only one party that can do it, and that's the DPP. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I think he he's placed his bet on the DPP being just simply more powerful. So now he's deputy deputy secretary general of the DPP. Well, congrats to him. And this week in humor, we have Bind Joe <laughs> <laughs> and the birth rate. <laughs> Mining Cho was out. What was he speaking? Oh, God. He was saying that Tsai Ing-wen was responsible for the, the fall off in the birth rate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, let me load that up. He is. Um, the quotes in this are seriously funny. Um, all right, so. The result is Tsai's bad policies, yes. Yes. So, Ma says declining birth rate result of Tsai's bad policies. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I know nothing gets my libido down like a really poorly written labor policy. You know? <laughs> it says here, the nation's birth rate has dropped over the past three years because President Tsai Ing-wen's labor, economic, and cross-strait policies have made people not want to give birth, former President Ma Ying-jeou said on Friday. <laughs> 
Oh, look at something that's cross. She doesn't accept the 1992 consensus. Honey, I don't want to have any more kids. No. <laughs> oh, and it says here, <clears throat> the leadership of Ty's administration has led to a stagnant economy. Ma said, adding that its f policy of one fixed day off and one flexible rest day and pension reform for military personnel and civil servants also discouraged people from having children because pensioners are a big, big market for children. <laughs> And frozen relations across the Taiwan Strait are also weighing on the birth rate, he added. So, you know, I mean, between her labor policies and pension reform and frozen relations across the Strait, I mean, how, how can people procreate under these circumstances? And they can't. It's just... And the southbound policy, all those people leaving. I know. Going to beaches in the Philippines or <laughs> Indonesia and not procreating. Yes. <laughs> and um, he said uh, during his eight years as president, the number of newborns increased by 15,000. Quote, I am very happy that more babies were born even though they were not mine. Even though they were not mine. <laughs> <laughs> it, it would have been fine if he hadn't added that last part. <laughs> the truth is actually what? The truth is what? Because we look, I looked up the numbers. Yeah, the, the, the thing is, is that if you look at the birth rate numbers, they, they, they kind of have been coming down and Over kind of going up many, and down. Over many, many years. Yes, it, this is something that predated him and post-dated him. Yes. Uh, he did have the good fortune and the misfortune, I think, of actually having since 2000 the highest birth rate year and the lowest birth rate. The lowest birth rate year ever was 2010. Uh, but the, here are a lot of babies. It's like if you're, you know, if, if it's a, a particularly auspicious year, the number of births goes up. If it's an inauspicious year, it goes down. And I think he got both, actually. Yeah. Uh, according well, to he also had the economic... Uh, the economic bust in 2008 yes. that reverberated for the next couple of years, causing low birth rates here. Yes, and I, I saw you, you also commented on Facebook about, uh, he also commented on the suicide rate during the Chen Sui Oh yeah, era. that was another one. Yeah. So uh, this is an improvement over him blaming Chen Sui for the suicide rate and saying it was worse than the white terror. Yes. <sighs> yeah. But you notice in here Ma's reference, economic stagnation. This is the KMT refrain whenever they talk about the DPP. Mm -hmm. They're still trying to create this idea that the DPP is bad for the economy, even though we all saw what happened under the Mind Joe administration. Yep. And that, uh, you know, obviously cross strait relations are now frozen. Um, you know, and because of that, obviously, we're all locked up in the bedroom, so go freeze your sobbing. ovaries. Sobbing. Yeah, sobbing. Not procreating. <laughs> yes. I'm not going to have sex with you until Tying would accepts the 1992 consensus. Yes. <laughs> and changes their labor policies. <laughs> so now we have one last sad report for tonight. All right. The Formosa Alliance. All those old guys who hate Tying would have decided to form a political party. And it's going to have money. Mm -hmm. And it could do a lot of damage. You know, I, I don't think it will. I don't think it will, but it, it could if they actually knew what they were doing. Yeah. Now, what's interesting about this is that when the Formosa Alliance originally launched, it was for the referendum item right. on the nation's name going into the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. The DPP government, uh, the administration led by Tsai Ing-wen, basically did everything they could to make sure that people did not vote and the DPP did not encourage people to vote on changing or rectifying Taiwan's name to Taiwan going into the 2020 Olympics. Olympics. Yeah. So the referendum item lost. Now, that version of the Formosa Alliance was backed by people like Li Donghui. Now, I noticed at this converting the Formosa Alliance to a party, I didn't see Li Donghui's name mentioned anywhere. No, and it's the same crowd that's been criticizing Tsai Ing-wen and pushing yeah. Lai Ching, the William Lai, yeah. for the last uh, year or so. So, <sighs> so you know, I mean, it's basically it's a lot of old, older pro-independent supporters on the of the old school, very old school Taidu, 
which is they want to make sure that there is a, Thai, a Republic of Taiwan established against now the, D, the current DPP policy, which is essentially Hua Du, which is the Republic of Chi, Tai Taiwan is the it has the name Republic of China and it's an independent country. country. That's been DPP policy since the nineties. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, and so, but the reason why I don't think the Formosa Alliance is going to make another is going to make much of a dent, is it seems like there's a new party like this founded every few years. Yeah. I mean, true. what's what's different between this and the TSU? Well, the TSU is Li Nanghui's uh, right. Li Nanghui's personal thing. So these guys are going to be competing with the TSU. Well, I think really? actually the reason they formed a party is because if they form some other kind of organization, they have to report their finances in greater detail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're a political party... <laughs> well, they did say that they're not going to run a presidential candidate in this election, and that they're targeting getting 10 legislative seats. 10? Ten. 10. Okay. That's, that's a significant number. If they were to get 10, that would make them the third largest party in the legislature. Let's hope not. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for uh, checking in and listening to us tonight. Have a good week, and we'll see you next week.